What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC and today we have the all new Blade Infusion 180. I am super excited about this model. It literally just showed up about two and a half minutes ago. I grabbed the box at my door, opened up the brown box, got everything out, cleaned the table off because we're working on the Kraken 580 build and threw it up on the table, grabbed the camera and we have to get an unboxing video because I am super excited. So we have two 3S 800 milliamp smart packs and then we have a set of IC2 connectors and this is so I can change the connector because these are JSTs so I do have a JST to IC2 connector adapter so if you don't want to solder and you want to just run an adapter you can do that uh, the 850s are not out yet I don't believe or out of stock and the new 600 milliamp, I think, that are coming, those aren't out yet. So you have a wide variety of batteries, and we'll get into that in a minute. So let's get the camera set up on the tripod, and let's open this box. All right, right so we have our Infusion 180, brand new release from Blade. Incredible, incredible box art, like always, of course. We have all of our specs, our information on the outside of the box. Skill level 2, Infusion 180, direct drive, which is what I'm super excited about. Blade, thank you for sending this model to me. I am super excited, and I think it's fantastic that they are going with the new age, the new technology, direct drive. That is where all these companies are going, and if you have flown a direct drive, the power is incredible, low parts count, cra crash cost is fantastic. Cannot wait. So we have smart technology inside, of course. Like anything from Blade, you're going to have smart technology. We have rug rugged design. It is a bind and fly, so we have all of our information on the outside of the box. And of course, in the back, we have all of our specs slid on there. No assembly, safe technology, panic uh, recovery, dual ESCs, so on and so forth. But the thing I like is everything on this model is all new. This is not a just an, a, another 180, another thrown together model or using existing parts. Blade has used everything from the ground up on this model. Everything on this thing is a new design and not used from other models, including the fly barless unit it is the 6251 not the 6250 so but quit jacking the jaw quit talking and let's cut this thing open so of course brand new i have yet to see this thing yet i am super excited it is literally mother's day on this filming for all you mothers out there happy mother's day i told my wife we had to wait i know we we're supposed to go do stuff but i had to get this thing open so first thing we got is the instruction manual we have the infusion 180 and it looks like we get a little parts bag. We get some Velcro, we get a couple different Allen wrenches, we get some really nice little screwdrivers, we got a little Phillips and a little flathead, and we get a little fine plug. So let's go ahead and take this out of the bag. So your normal instruction manual, this is the Bible to all of your models. Always, always keep your instruction manual. I have literally folders and booklets underneath my table of hundreds of manuals from every model I have built over the years. So this is going to give you all your specs, your length, your rotor height. This is going to, we have a 650 kV main motor. We have a 5,500 kV tail motor. We have the Infusion 180 6251 fly barless unit. The ESC, it's, it's a smart ESC. We have 12 gram metal gear servos. It is recommended for a 6S, I'm sorry, a 3S 600 milliamp LiPo. Uh, but we do have some 800s. This model will take a wide variety. So we have all your normal stuff on your bind procedures, your setup, calibration, so on and so forth. And we'll touch more on this on the radio setup video. Set that guy aside. Again, we have this little bag here. And this little bag is all your little tools, Velcro, little Allen wrenches, little Phillips, little flathead. Really nice that they include that. Then we have a Blade 180 foam. Let's open this up. And wow, look at that. That is incredible looking. So we have some little bit of uh, masking tape holding the boom down. Let's just carefully, we can peel it, but for video's sake, we're just gonna cut it. So let's go ahead and lift this model out. We do have a round aluminum looking tail boom, I wanna say. It does look aluminum. This tape doesn't wanna get out. So of course, now this is the helicopter, nothing else in the box. So we are going to set the box aside and let's focus on this thing. This thing looks incredible. First impressions are fantastic. 
So when I first see on it, we have an aluminum tail boom, a carbon fiber mainframe, a nice rugged nylon skid. I really like nylon skids over carbon fiber just because, especially on a beginner, somebody new, you can beat this helicopter up and you don't have to worry about breaking the carbon fiber skids. We have a two-piece vacuum molded plastic canopy, so it is gonna be light. I do like the, dot, the design of the, of the color scheme. Uh, let's see how visible it is in the air, but I do like how big the canopy is. It gives the helicopter a bigger feel. We do have a plastic uh, hub and blade grips. We have plastic links. Let's go ahead and pop this canopy off now. We have rubber grommets, of course. Canopy is going to be durable in a crash. It can fold, it can move. I love fiberglass canopies. I'm a big fiberglass person, but for the, the beginner style helicopter or somebody that's not that great intermediate and you're gonna be crashing, plastic can definitely take a little bit more of a beating than fiberglass can. So let's set that guy aside. All right, so now we have a carbon fiber mainframe. We have a massive 650 kV main motor, direct drive, so shaft right out the bottom of the motor to the head block. Pretty thick carbon fiber mainframe sides. It's a one piece side, so if you have to break, if you break one in a crash, have to do some repair or anything, you can literally just take your screws out, replace one side at a time. Very simplistic design they did here. Blade did a great job. Kept the parts count really, really low. So we have our main battery is going to slide in under here. So we have a pretty big battery bay. So you can fit a wide variety of batteries. We do have an IC2 connector for the smart. And then we have our dual smart ESC right under here. So it honestly looks like the size of the 230 ESC. Not quite sure if it's something different or not. It says it's different. And then we have the 6251 fly barless unit, the MHXA. So infusion, we have it on a nice thick piece of uh, foam anti-vibration tape. We have our micro connectors and all of our wires running. We have a nice metal gear servo and then these servos don't have stops, which is nice so they can rotate all the way around. We have a solid ball link on the servo horn and on the swash plate. They are threaded and there is these little squeeze adjustments. So you can, you can squeeze these together or pry them apart. I would just rather use the turnbuckles for that adjustment. We have a very thick and beefy looking plastic swash plate. Everything on this model looks very beefy. It looks thick. Uh, it, it, it's a great design. Even the head, it is plastic. And I know a lot of you guys are going to say, I wish Blade would use metal parts and so on and so forth. Plastic isn't bad. Plastic has been around for many, many years. And that's beside the point. But this plastic can take a beating. And yes, it may break in a crash, but aluminum bends too. I love aluminum parts, I love aluminum heads, but in a crash, plastic will always be cheaper to fix and it is lighter. So for the target audience that Blade has done with this model, they did a fantastic job. I'm extremely happy with them. So we have a plastic bottom plate where your motor bolts to, you have four motor bolts and your big motor. It looks like there's one set screwed down in there and your main collar and that shaft should pull straight out the top. We have a blade, normal carbon composite main blade Go ahead we have our nice blade holder which i love when helicopters come with blade holders there's some companies out there that do not give you blade holders and it's it's just a little pet peeve of mine so we have a nice round aluminum tail boom we have a carbon composite plastic uh boom block uh, plastic carbon anti-rotation bracket it is very solid like it, you have to hold this helicopter in your hands to feel how solid this thing is i mean i'm squeezing on it very tough little design. It looks great. Moving on to the tail boom, we have a nice nylon style, pretty thick. Oh, no, that's carbon. That's a carbon fiber tail fin. Looks nylon, but if you get it, look at it, it is carbon. So carbon fiber tail fin, that's a plus. We have a plastic tail motor mount, and I like that they took the time to run the wires through the inside. No exposed wires on this model. Uh, we have a really cool looking tail blade design, little off center, something different than normal. And then of course, 5,500 kV tail motor. So overall, I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed by this model. It is very smooth. I mean, that, that motor just feels fantastic. It is pretty light for a 180 size. So now let's grab a battery and let's see how the battery fits. All right, so we got one of our, we're gonna be flying this model on some 3S 800 milliamp 50C smart packs. So these are Gen 1 packs because they have the balance lead, but that is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and take this model out or this battery out. Very nice battery, just like all of Spectrum Smart Packs. We will be cutting the connectors and soldering on some of these IC2 plugs just so everything matches. Uh, but if you don't want to solder nothing, that's okay. You can get an adapter from JST to IC2. So if you want to use your adapter, use your adapter. If you don't mind soldering, I personally, I'm not a JST fan. I really don't like these connectors that much. I would much rather have the IC2s. So connector gone, we'll throw IC2s on it. That's beside the point. So the battery is going to fit down inside of here just like this. And it fits very nicely. Very nice battery. We're going to put some Velcro on it, of course. And then your battery strap here is to tighten it down. Very simplistic. No trays, no nothing. Just slide your battery in lock it down and you are ready to fly, plug yourself in and go fly. Now for binding, you are going to use, and again, we're gonna go over all this in the radio setup video, but you have your bind plug here. This bind plug is going to go into this port here. You're gonna put your radio into bind mode after you set it up according to the manual. And again, stay tuned for the radio setup video. That will be out in the next day or two and we will get this thing set up and get some flights on it, which I am very excited for. So if you don't have any smart packs, that's okay. Let's see what other batteries will fit. All right, now I got a old E-Flight 3S 800 milliamp. This came off of the original uh, 230S V1 V2. This actually came with my V2 helicopter. I got XT30s on it, of course. So if I want to use it on this model, I will have to make an adapter or change these to IC2s. But it will fit and it fits in there nicely. We got plenty of room on both sides and it does not hit the motor. We got plenty, we got a little bit of room. We could slide it forward, slide it back for adjustment of CG. So now we're gonna grab a Jens Ace 800 and it does fit too. So I don't have a very big selection of 3S 800 milliamp packs or 600 milliamp packs. I'm not a big three cell person. I have a couple OMP batteries, of course, that would fit, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Spectrum Smart 800 milliamp 3S packs. They are fantastic batteries. I really love the simplicity of these smart batteries and they fit perfect. But if you wanna use something else, there's a Gen Zace 3S800. That is tight, of course, because we have Velcro on it, but that battery fits. The older, if you guys have the 230S V1, V2, or even the new one, then you should have these batteries for your new 230 because it's the same battery. You can use those. So you have a wide variety of 3S, anywhere from 600 to 800 milliamp packs that fit. So now let's throw the canopy back on and get a conclusion. All right, we got the canopy toss back on. There you guys go. Unboxing video, going over all the specs. Overall, under my first impressions of this helicopter, I am extremely pleased. I think it's a fantastic looking little machine. And it is very, very durable and solid that I can feel. I mean, it just feels so strong in your hands and you won't know what I'm talking about until you get one. But stay tuned, I am going to get the radio setup done we'll get a video of that and then we'll get some flights in on it and we'll see what this thing is all about and then after we are done with all the initial flights we are going to give this thing to my grandpa and let him get some flights on it and see how he likes it we're going to do a video i'm going to hand him the radio and let's see him fly this thing because it's supposed to be a great all-around helicopter so we're going to give it to a, a novice somebody that's not the best but not the worst and somebody that can fly a good helicopter and see how great he thinks of it. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Again, Horizon Hobbies, Blade, thank you guys for sending this to me. Uh, uh, more than happy to work with you on this and I can't wait to get some, I'm very excited about it. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like, subscribe, take care and have a great day.